in this video we will talk about continuous uh, deployment or continuous delivery so um, what i will do is like i said in my first video i will create a resource on the cloud which will be azure uh, web app and uh, what i will do is i will deploy my local web application uh, which we built using the build pipeline in the previous videos um, I will use that uh, source code and I will build that using the build pipeline and then the release pipeline will pick that build code and deploy it into the cloud. So that's what we will see um, in this particular video. So now let's create a resource which is nothing but an Azure Web App resource. So I will create that from the normal uh, Azure portal marketplace. Uh, I fill in the basic details, the resource group, uh, I give an instant. Uh, my web app and name I select .NET Core 3.1 as the runtime stack and the name of the instance is Manjo Web App and this I will select a standard size a standard sh a shared infrastructure that's the least expensive one I reckon because that's for dev and test then I click on monitoring and um, just fo follow the defaults uh, right and then uh, I click on create so basically, uh, I have created that now Manjo Web App. Uh, after creating, I realized that the runtime stack I gave here is .NET Core 3.1, but my application is running on .NET 6, so that's not compatible. So um, what I had to do was I had to come down to this general settings in here. And when I say compatible, I assume obviously .NET 6 will be backward compatible for sure, but there will be newer features in .NET 6 uh, which may not work with .NET 3. So it's better to have your web app as, uh, in .NET Core 6 as well, you know, just match it to what you have in your application and the same stack should be there on your cloud as well. Now what I'll do is I'll just select it to .NET version 6 and just save it. Click on continue here and your web app settings should be updated now. Now uh, I'm back to my uh, Azure uh, DevOps and I create a new pipeline. So something similar to what we did earlier. So I select a repository. I select the, I configure this build pipeline, give Windows 22 in the VM image. This is something similar to what we have seen in my earlier videos and i remove the test task from here uh, but what i do is i add another task called uh, publish build artifact so basically what this will do is this will compile our code and uh, put the compiled code the dll and all in a folder which we specify here so uh, you, you can select the publish location as azure pipeline or file share i will select pipeline in this case and select add so like I said, uh, this is the publish task. It has three inputs, path to publish, artifact name, which I'll give as drop, which will be a folder created. And then there is this public location, which is the container, um, which I will give here. So path to publish is generated by default. I, I have given the artifact name as drop and publish location as container. Uh, I click on save and run. I give a commit message and I click on save and run. Now we can see the job is running and uh, you can also see that one artifact is, is produced. So I will show you what the artifact is by clicking on that. Uh, so I will just click on this artifact here, the one which is produced. So basically it, uh, it builds all the source code and puts it in the drop folder for us to pick up. So when I say us here, it's uh, more about continuous delivery. So continuous delivery or continuous deployment can pick the required files from here. And uh, among all these files, we see the XML, CMD, text file and all, but the most important one is the zip file. That is where all the uh, artifacts, I mean, you know, the DLL and all exists. So uh, that is important here. Um, basically, I will go to my Azure portal and navigate to my web app, which is Manjo Web App. Um, so here, uh, I will just click on Browse. And see, when I click on Browse, it takes me to the deployment and it says, you know, where the web app is running but it is still doesn't have any content. So that's what uh, you see here. So basically what we will do is we will publish our web app onto this here, onto the cloud. And yeah, let's see that. Now I will navigate to my DevOps and in the pipelines, I will create a release pipeline. So I will click on releases here. 
right so basically we are creating a release pipeline now uh, i will click on new pipeline here uh, and that will open up uh, tons of options on the right so tons of templates to choose from so since we are deploying our web app into azure web app onto the cloud so uh, i will select something appropriate to that but then you know there are tons of other options on the left which is highlighted now uh, you see that this is a new release pipeline of course and then you can create stages on the right uh, and then you have these artifacts here so artifacts is the one which the release pipeline will pick uh, the items from and you know artifacts is something like intermediate so build pipeline puts it in the artifacts and release pipeline picks it from the artifacts so artifact is the uh, intermediate middle layer between build pipeline and the release pipeline so now I will click here Azure App Service Development and uh, I will click on Stages. So basically I will give the stage name as Development and you see it on the left. Then I will click on Add. Basically I'm adding an artifact and I will select the project as second app and uh, I will select the source. Uh, I will select Source Build Pipeline as Source App Project Repo 1. So one thing um, I missed at beginning of this video is I created the build pipeline, a new build pipeline, but I named it again, I think, a second app project repo. But there was one already with that name. So this one was created with a one at the end. So that's why you see a one. Uh, ideally, you can name it much more appropriate and obviously, you know, but uh, I will uh, go ahead with this repo one name at the end, right? Uh, yeah, and source alias is also the same. One thing is the source type. So source type is build because the, we are picking the artifact, whatever the build pipeline produced it for us. But then source type can be anything else as well, Azure repos, GitHub, PF, BC, etc. So in this case, I am selecting source type as build. Click on add and then I will click, and click on add an artifact here. So this will be named second app project repo one, whatever we, uh, the name we gave while creating that effect. And then under development, I will click on one job and one task. And here is the task which we added deploy Azure App Service. So I will select the connection type as Azure Resource Manager and I will link it using manage. So basically I will create a service connection. I need to create a service connection here. And you can create a connection from Azure pipelines to any external and remote services for executing tasks in a job. For instance, uh, in this case, we'll create a service connection with our Azure subscription. And then uh, we will use that name of the service connection in uh, our Azure website deployment task uh, in the release pipeline. So that is what we are doing here. I will click on create a service connection now and then under a list of options on the right. So I have to choose the service or connection type. I will select Azure Resource Manager, scroll down and click on next. And in here, uh, I will use the authentication method to be service principal, which is the recommended type and click on next again. And scope level is subscription. So I will enter the subscription ID. I will select the resource group. I will select the service connection name. It is important. That is what we will use in future. So I have named it test service connection. Resource group uh, is an existing one, test RG, which I had already. So here is the service connection, which I created now. So back in my Azure DevOps, uh, when I click on manage, this time I see my test service connection, the connection which I created recently. I select that. And then um, what I can do is uh, in the deploy Azure app service, uh, you see that I have, I have given the subscription and I can click on authorize and that will uh, authorize me. And in the app service name, I can give Manju web app. So if you remember correctly, uh, at the beginning of this video, I created Azure web app and I named it uh, Manju web app. So this is the app service name which we will give here, which is Manju web app. I click on save, just press on OK. And I will name this pipeline Manju web app deployment. I go to all pipelines and there we see that uh, Manju web app deployment pipeline is there. I will click on uh, create a release. So currently there are no releases. So I will click on create a release. And uh, this is the artifact second uh, project one. So if I click on create a new release, uh, we have artifact already, which was created from our previous build pipeline. In here, I will select development and click on okay. So on the top, you can see release one has been created. I will click on that. There is some pop-up, I'll disclose it. 
so uh, we have artifacts here so one thing i want to explain is that at the beginning of this video like i said i created a build pipeline that picked the source code and uh build the source code and put all those uh dlls or whatever right in the zip file in the drop folder and we have that artifact here so that is what we are seeing here now what will happen is what we expect to happen is that our release pipeline will pick that artifact and deploy it into the cloud so i will click on development and here you can see artifacts already there that would be the input for this release pipeline and then i will click on deploy so this is kind of a manual deployment so our development you can see is queued waiting for a job it says and again it runs on an agent like in build pipeline was running on an agent even release pipeline runs on an agent in case of build pipeline we use windows studio 2 or ubuntu and all which was generated on the fly and built our code and all here also there is an agent which picks the artifacts and then you know does what it needs to do so our development is in progress and after around i think 30 seconds or something 26 seconds our development is released by any success succeeded and it says it was manually triggered the release has been succeeded and you know um, that's what we wanted to achieve and we have achieved that and a couple of things i would like to clarify here in this particular case we triggered the release pipeline manually so we had to go and deploy manually ideally this uh, should be done automatically whenever there is an artifact produced by the build pipeline release pipeline should pick it up and that uh, brings me to my second point here which i wanted to discuss so um, as part of the whole continuous deployment it you know we have ci which was the build pipeline which picks the source code and builds the source code and puts it in the artifacts folder in the drop folder and then there's continuous delivery which is the release pipeline uh, and the entire thing the azure repos continuous integration continuous delivery entire thing the whole process becomes automated and that is called continuous deployment so i wanted to just clarify that um, hope you get now so that's it for this video guys in the next video i will actually show you the whole process right from continuous integration to continuous delivery you know in one step so that you know we automate it kind of